Jay, how special is it for you just to see Neil have the weekend he had at the Masters? Uh, it's incredibly special and very deserving for him. Um, Neil's journey has been amazing, so to see where he's come in, in the last couple of years to, to get um, the, the results and the uh, success that he's had has been really, really satisfying for all of us and, and especially for him. He seems very comfortable with, uh, you know, fame and, you know, but some of the jokes that are being made out there. Is that just kind of his personality? It totally is. He he is exactly who you see in the media or in, uh, on TV. Um, he's a great guy to have in the van and on trips, and he's just a lot of fun to be around. And um, he loves to have a good time, and, and we uh, – we certainly enjoyed having him around, for sure. Jay, you said he is the most interesting man in the world. So is he any more interesting now after what he's been through this last week? Uh, to us, he's still the same goofy clown that he's always been. And um, that's what's special about him is, you know, the, the success has obviously changed him to a lot of people that have kind of been exposed to who Neil Shipley is. But to us, um, he, he's still the guy that uh, loves his beloved Pittsburgh roots and all the teams there that – uh, most of the guys here have, have uh, I-71, uh, you know, th there's a lot of smack talk during the fall and, and whatnot, but um, yeah, to us, he's, he's still the same guy. How special is it to have guys like Neil and Max leading this program this year, and they can share their experiences and what they've done the last year? Uh, they, they've been tremendous ambassadors for Ohio State men's golf, and we're certainly proud of that first and foremost. It's um, it's most satisfying to me to see these young men leave our program ready to lead lives that are going to be, um, you know, fulfilling and to give back to the communities they go and be a part of, to their future families. Um, and so for them to be leading our program uh, in a first-class manner on and off the course is really special for us. Obviously, when you saw, when you you saw were... Neil paired with Tiger, what was your – I mean, that, you had to think that's pretty cool, but – look out so i think the most interesting part of saturday was they both were going the wrong direction in the leaderboard kind of simultaneously so i was watching it and a, a number of people were texting me that like oh it could happen it could happen and and sure enough is you know neil made the double on 18 i think to to drop a couple spots and you know tiger the, the course was obviously playing really challenging and guys were losing strokes coming in so um, it was lining up, and then as soon as Tiger finished, we kind of felt like, you know, it would it would line up that way based on the way the pairings are typically done. Um, so it was it was a, a tremendous consolation prize uh, for Neil to get that pairing, and we were just hoping that, that Tiger would for sure play the 72 holes. And he obviously, you know, his his body is not what it used to be, so. Um, there's always a chance that you know he may not may not play that final round, but to see him come out, um, there's a ton of respect that we all had for him, you know, finishing out the event. Even though he, we all know he was he was feeling, um, you know, pretty beat up through the week, but um, it, it was certainly pretty cool for all of us to see that. Best double bogey in Neil's life, yeah, for sure. <laughs> How do you see Neil and Max make each other better? That they're. Their competitiveness is, is truly um, is truly organic, and it just kind of naturally comes out in both of them. So they've they've just naturally when when Neil got on campus, he wanted everything that Maxwell Moldovan had. You know, he wanted um, the the ranking and the success and the results that Max had been producing for a number of years. And um, and, and now that you know Neil has had some more you know national success, you know Max is motivated to work even harder so they've had a really healthy relationship through competitive nature um, that's what we try to bring into the locker room is guys that are that want to compete that want to push each other around um, Max played number one for us the moment he stepped foot on campus which is pretty rare as a freshman so um, Neil's been really good to for him and and you know to push him and um, they, they've been great for each other and I think both would, would agree to that Jay, what was it like seeing a current Ohio State golfer in Butler Cabin on Sunday? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time since that's happened, so it was re really special. Um, I told my wife that I was I was going to get a little emotional. I'm from Georgia originally, so the Masters has always been really special to me. I grew up. Um, Jack Nicklaus was the first autograph I got when I was like eight years old, and so um, it was a really special moment to see uh, Jim Nance call. Neil's name and for him to be sitting next to Scotty and John Rahm, uh, Chairman Ridley, that was incredibly special for all of us. And for him to just still be himself. And now it's 
kind of gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, it was certainly a memorable night for him uh, in a number of ways, but for all of us, um, it was it was funny, it was sentimental, it was every emotion in between. I think for me, I don't know about anybody else watching that round, the coolest part for me was watching him and Tiger walk down the fairway on one. 100%. And just talk. Yeah. How, what was that like for you? Well, we knew, um, we knew Neil would start the conversation. <laughs> Neil, Neil can Neil can talk with the best of them, and um, so we knew that if, if Tiger was up for it, we knew he would he would engage in some conversation. So um, it was super cool to see, you know, a, a generational st superstar to, um, you know, just be enjoying a, a, you know, great conversation, and um, they they seem to be thoroughly enjoying each other's company out there and, and that was um, that that was a truly priceless you know uh, experience for Neil and for us all to witness uh, was really was really neat and they you know the Masters app's the greatest app that's ever been created um, and so they, they you know to capture that entire round uh, so many people have told me you know they watched the entire round on that and, and they did a great job you know really capturing the whole thing which is which is really neat. How do you feel like things are setting up now for your team as you get ready to, you know, get into the home stretch of your season? Well, it's going to be great to sleep in our own beds for a couple of weeks and, and be here at home. Um, obviously, this is a highlight of our, our season um, to play on Scarlet, to play our home course. Uh, this is actually the first time all season we've played uh, within 600 miles of campus. We, we have flown to every event. We've had a great schedule and, and, and played some great tournaments, great events. Uh, but to play at home is really special, and for these seniors, it's going to be their last, uh, their last go at Scarlet. So they obviously want to want to go out um, in a big way and with a strong finish. So uh, there's a lot of focus on that, but also just you know playing this course the way they do and the way they have success day in and day out is really important. And then looking to next week at Sayota, um, the guys are, are really excited. You know, the moment Sayota got the bid, we were obviously thrilled um, to have that event. You know kind of in our backyard and, and um, the course will be terrific. It'll be a great championship for all the teams and players. So it'll be really special these next couple weeks here. How do you think someone like Neil can draw from his experience now this past week to now finishing up his college career? It's funny, we were talking about that this morning. And I think the I think these events will actually be a great escape for him. He's obviously the most comfortable on the golf course. So to get away uh, from some of the chaos and the noise that's been surrounding him the last couple of days, uh, I think he'll be very eager to get to the first tee tomorrow, but um, he's looking forward to competing. He loves to play golf, and so um, he, he, he will play golf, you know, every day for most of the rest of the days of his life, and, um, you know, being out on the golf course is a, is a really comforting place for him, but at the same time, that's, that's what he loves to do, and uh, when you follow your heart, there's some magic that can happen. You guys feel like you know Sayota maybe better than the uh, other teams should be competing against next week? <sighs> Not entirely. The golf course has been redone recently, so we really haven't seen it. Um, I've played it a couple times, and probably more than the team, since we're allowed to. The coaches are allowed to go and, and play it, but the players are not. So, uh, you know, the, the golf course is going to potentially play a lot different than um, even if even if anyone has seen it. Um, it can play a lot different this time of year than any other time of year. So uh, we haven't seen it. The players haven't been on it all year, but. Um, it, it's still going to come down to hitting the shots and executing whether you know it or don't. Um, but uh, we're certainly looking forward to just, you know, playing in a, in a golf course that's in our community and being right here at home. Jay, what, what is it like being a golf coach where you put all this time and work and, and effort into it and then you finally in your head you're going, make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you're, it comes down to that, right? I mean, it does. There's a lot of there's a lot of trust and that goes into these guys. You know, we put the prep in the practice round day. It's kind of our focus on you know being more hands on with these guys and making sure that they um, that they understand you know what uh, w what they're looking for in terms of you know strategy and expectations. But when when they're when their names called, it's time for them to you know them to go hit the shots and to get you know entirely laser focused in their routine and you know we kind of stay out of the way we'll be there for you know reassurance and and um you know just kind of you know support and whatnot but um it, it's 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 that's the beautiful thing about golf is 
you know, you're out there by yourself and it's you and the golf ball and figuring out a way to get in the hole. And um, that's what we all love about the sport, but it's also comes with, you know, the challenge of just, you know, watching guys and a lot of nervous energy out there. Yeah, and when you have guys like Max and Neil on a team, that's, that's rare to have two guys who've had, who've had accomplishments like they had. Is there a sense you gotta make hay while the sun shines, you know what I mean, type sense with a, with a team like this? For sure, we, we wanna, you know, obviously capitalize and make the most out of, out of having these guys. Um, and, and they've done a great job throughout their career of, um, you know, being great teammates to, to the, rest of the, the rest of the squad. But um, certainly they've got, you know, big expectations as we all do um, of how they wanna finish, finish the season out in their careers. Hey, one of the quick, I asked Neil this a couple of weeks ago, I had him on my podcast, but I was just wondering, what have you seen that's a difference in him from a couple of years ago that's kind of turned it on, so to speak? Yeah, so in, in golf, you oftentimes have players um, that their skill level and their confidence level are not, are, are uneven and, and not matched up. And so Neil was a player that always believed in himself and had a ton of confidence and we knew that if he ever started, you know, getting to a skill level that could catch up to that, he, he was going to be a, a force. And he just continued to put in work and to put in a, a lot of time to um, to really be a, a tremendous ball striker. And um, his short game was where he's made some huge progress, um, you know, putting in, you know, the time that it takes to be a great putter and to be comfortable changing speeds. Neil grew up in Western PA where they've got a lot of undulating and a lot of fast greens. And the difference in college golf and the, the tour is the tour plays the same speed of greens week in and week out. We don't. And so you see medium, fast, slow, and to be able to change speeds week in and week out is a skill that has to be learned over time. And Neil has really, you know, put in the, uh, the work to be able to, to manage that. And, and, you know, it's obviously paid dividends in his, performance and his results but um, he's just worked his tail off and I couldn't be more proud of um, you know him kind of you know owning his um, you know his professionalism and the way that he you know comes to comes to this place every day and um, he, he's really managed to uh, to, to kind of you know pers pursue greatness through this journey and it's been fun to watch.